Three common MMI mistakes to avoid to ace your interview. Hey, BMO Nation. Welcome to another episode of the One Question Podcast. My name is Ronza and I'm joined by my colleague, Meng. Hi, Meng. Hey. <laughs> now we have nothing to sell you, just pure strategies and tips so everyone has equal access to education. Now, in case you've never watched or listened to one of these before, they are completely unscripted. There's no fancy music or visual effects. It's just pure content. We have 10 minutes to tackle a new topic each week. And this week is three common MMI mistakes to avoid to ace your interview. So I'm going to set the timer here, Mang. All right. Okay. Um, one of my favorite topics, the MMI. Now the MMI um, has multiple different components when it comes to preparing, when it comes to understanding, when it comes to evaluating. Uh, there's just so many different things to consider. However, I think it's very important that we note here, Mang, the obvious common mistakes that we've seen um, from our own experiences with students and of course, if we can address these mistakes, we hope that you can avoid them. And then in turn, and the last bit, if we have time, is really kind of giving you the, the to-dos, the strategies, right, um, of how to prepare and help you to make sure that you can ace your interview. All right. So I think when it comes to these um, common errors, what we've seen, first and foremost, it's very obvious, it's just lack of preparation. So either preparing too late, um, we have students that come to us and some might say, oh, I have an interview in three days. I need to start preparing right now. So obviously not um, setting the adequate time. And I know most, most of you might say, well, you know, sometimes we might get that interview invitation a little later on. Um, Meng, what do we say to that? You know, people say, <laughs> well, I just found out I had an interview. What, what would you be your direct response to that? <laughs> okay, well, uh, I hope that I, I don't have to um, give the response, but at that point, honestly, it's, um, it's a little late to start preparing <laughs> for a, something as intensive as the MMI because it involves correcting bad habits and developing good habits, uh, and that takes time. Even Absolutely. if you can come up with good answer content, uh, everything else to do with doing well on, on the interview takes a lot of time to, to prepare. It does. And I think what we always suggest and what we would say in addition to that, I mean, well, we wouldn't want to tell students too late. We're going to try to help you. But yeah. I think what, what, what Meng would also definitely strongly suggest is, well, this is why you set the time proactively, right? We have a lot of students that do this. They anticipate. You want to make sure that you've done a well, great job of applying. So you're hoping you're going to get that interview invitation. So let's proactively start preparing, whether that's just learning. As Meg mentioned, there's so much components. Just learning the fundamentals, um, understanding the types of questions. So again, there's no really excuse to say that, hey, I, I just, I didn't think I was going to get an interview invitation. So make sure you set that adequate time to prepare well in advance, even before um, receiving an interview invitation, because sometimes it might just be within a week that they might give you, depending on the program um, and the limited spots. Uh, you might, yeah, you might get short notice. You have to prepare in advance regardless. Uh, so definitely make sure that you set that time and uh, yeah, get prepared. Now, secondly, in terms of a common error that we see here, Mang, I think I would probably say, and this is a big one uh, and a lot underestimate, is the lack of structure. Uh, Meng, what do we mean when we say lack of structure? Yeah, when you approach the question, when you begin your response, someone who doesn't have structure in their response uh, tends to have disorganized answers that are either too short or too long. Maybe they don't answer the question thoroughly. Maybe they approach it judgmentally. Uh, there could be all kinds of issues with not having a good structure in mind when you approach an MMI station, an MMI prompt. And I think that's very important to note because it can be overwhelming. And a lot of students have this misconception of, I have to memorize my response, right? This is the type of question that's being asked. And when it comes to uh, the structure, it really helps for you to, well, it maintains your confidence overall. All of this does. Preparation, having a structure, not only leading up to the interview, but during the interview. And as we know, when it comes to MMI, it's time sensitive. 
right? Uh, whether that's reading the prompt, time sensitive, delivering the response, there's a, there's a timeline that you have to make sure that you complete your response by. Having this structure is going to be imperative to not only allow you to complete a response, but really do so in an effective way where you can hopefully ace your interview. Um, and that's, you know, how to approach scenarios, how to approach policy, how to approach personal, what do you do in a team collaborative task base? What do you do in an acting station? When you have those key strategies, um, you definitely can navigate this, uh, you know, in a confident way, but in an effective way and allows you to stand apart uh, from, from other individuals that are also completing the yes. MMI. So yeah. make sure you do not just go into it um, you know, without any structure, without any preparation and just thinking, Hey, I'm going to wing it. I'm going to read the question. I think I have an understanding of how to approach it. That's going to delay your response time. That's going to hurt your confidence and that's going to carry out in all the other stations. So you want to avoid that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think, um, something that I see a lot with students who I'm working with for the first time, who are less familiar with the structures that we recommend is that they spend a lot of their prep time, the reflection time that they have, trying to figure out what components to include. And then they don't have a lot, a lot of time to think about the actual content um, to put in their answers. And that's one advantage of having a structure is you never have that, you, you never need to think about what you need to include. You already know all the different components and all you have to do is uh, make sure that you include the relevant ones pending that particular scenario or that particular policy question or that particular personal question, um, just kind of using the structure as a framework to hang your answer off. Um, if, if the student, if you're someone who struggles with blanking out when you receive a question, this also helps you to get over that initial blank mind because what happens is you already know exactly what you need to do, what the first step is, what the second step is, what the third step is, what your conclusion should be, and you can plan ahead. And it also helps you to stay on time because you know that maybe the first component should be wrapped up within a minute or so. And the second component, you can spend a little bit longer than, than the first component. Maybe um, it could take up half your answer. And that way you can really keep yourself accountable to the time as well as Ramza, you mentioned, that is extremely important. It's not, Very. Good. it's not good to go over time, right? Yeah. And I think to know to um, what Meng, you just mentioned is, uh, you know, and this actually ties into my third one, is delivery, right? Neglecting that delivery component, being so focused on the response that you don't see how you're presenting yourself. And I think this is actually even tied into uh, lack of stress management, like different, you know, not having those uh, mechanisms into place. Men, could you yeah. tell us uh, a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, the, your delivery can, as you are hinting at, can be very, very much impacted by the level of stress that you're experiencing. And so being able to manage your stress and work on that prior to the interview is something we always recommend. Long-term stress management strategies might be very simple exercise, keeping up with nutrition, making sure you're getting enough rest, keeping yourself mentally healthy is extremely important. Um, just kind of doing your research about the school, the program before you go, uh, that will also help to calm some of the anxiety you have about this potentially novel experience that you're going to have. Um, and then it's even more important, I would say, to manage your stress, to learn how to manage your stress during the interview itself. Very simple but effective exercises like deep breathing, right? Sometimes when we see students stressed during in the middle of their answer during a mock interview when we're working with them, a lot of the times the feedback we tell them is, hey, if you're feeling a little bit of anxiety about your answer or you're starting to, you feel like your answer is starting to lose its structure, just take a really quick pause, take a deep breath and, and refocus yourself before moving on, right? Just put a pause to the effects of that stress immediately so that you can complete the rest of your answer in a coherent and concise way. Um, Absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, one thing to kind of just stress here, because uh, we're getting close to the time here, Meg, yeah. is that, you know, we're saying about all these things to avoid, right? You want to avoid lack of preparation, you want to avoid lack of structure, neglecting delivery. So what does that mean? Obviously, that means you need to prepare, you need to make sure that you have realistic simulation, you need to make sure that you're getting that proper feedback to improve on your structure and to improve on your delivery, right? Very important that that delivery component is not neglected because, uh, you know, at times I've seen this with students, it's not just what they said, it's how they said it that really had an impact on, you know, how it felt on the receiving end of that. So uh, with that in mind, you're going to have a proactive approach and ensure that you get through this in a timely and effective way. And that is time for today. Okay. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, then go ahead and share it with a friend. Subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. And of course, ask any questions in the comments section. See you next time. Bye, everyone.